Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. Look at this camera. This is a live camera up at uh, Revelstoke up there in Interior, BC. I mean, that is just spectacular. You've got that that valley cloud cover undercast sometimes, as it's called. Some new fresh snow up here from the last couple of days. And the next best chance of snow, you might see some this afternoon tonight, but then the better chance is Friday afternoon, Friday night into Saturday. But I just had to show you that really nice morning up there. Now here's radar across the west. Um, and, and a couple of things to point out here. Obviously nothing going on at Interior BC now, but you can see the next sort of the leading edge of the next storm system already moving in. Then down here, this is the remnant tropical moisture that's moving in, and that's going to get steered towards the four corners later today through the 23rd and even into the 24th as well. Looking, uh, taking a zoom down there into Arizona, Southern California. I mean, clearly you've got a surge of moist moisture coming in here and there's a bit of rotation around an area of low pressure as well. Again, just all remnant tropical moisture. Um, out of the Pacific, but certainly today you could have rain showers, maybe even a thunderstorm. Look at Vegas right now. Um, so you know this is uh, this is significant when you start to see that precip over Clark County, Southern Nevada, and even down here around Phoenix. Some of this might make its way up in a Flagstaff as well. Everything just coming out of the south. All right, let me show you my bullet points here this morning, and uh, here's what I'm looking at. So remnant tropical moisture, that's the first item of business. Still watching for this atmospheric river contribution. It looks like we're going to get some, but as I've been saying over the last couple of days, the focus is kind of to the north now, into the Pacific Northwest, Northern California, especially Oregon and Washington State up into British Columbia. I think that's where a lot of the moisture with this atmospheric river contribution is going to go. Um, but overall trending weaker for areas to the south. Um, but what will happen is some of this moisture will then get blown into the interior. Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado will all be beneficiaries of this. And you can see it with this timeline here. Best odds of snow for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. There's some initial moisture. Then we start to get into that atmospheric river. Um, and there's your uh, interior BC forecast if you're curious about that. Now, like yesterday... I drilled down on this just a little bit. So I picked out just a few locations again, same as yesterday. So for Alta, now it looks like maybe up to an inch or less than an inch uh, coming, in with, coming in with this remnant tropical moisture late today into tomorrow. That may brush the Wasatch. A lot of that gets steered into Colorado. Um, but maybe eight inches coming, potentially 1026 and 1027 once we get that first push of atmospheric river moisture. Snow mass, five and five, five with the remnant moisture, and then five with that initial atmospheric river push. Jackson Hole, I haven't really changed anything. Ten inches on the way. Rainier's got three feet coming. And Mount Washington, one to two potentially today. And then maybe a much larger push of snow and moisture, 1028, 1029, with potentially over 10 inches, maybe even more than a foot. So definitely some things there. Um, to look forward to on the horizon. This is water vapor. So this is up in the middle of the atmosphere looking at moisture. Very clearly you can see the remnant tropical low. You've already got some of the moisture and the whites and the blues showing up. Your dry air is in the oranges and the reds and the black colors there. And then look at this big boy up here. There's one there and there's another low behind it. This is the leading edge of what's going to be the atmospheric river flow. Once this moves into the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, BC, that's really gonna push the moisture content up. Um, and wait till I show you what that could look like on the water vapor. So let me show you the uh, forecast radar and satellite here. We'll start this up at lunchtime today. This is what the radar should show in the future. Even by lunch, you can definitely see this rotation around this area of low pressure. And there is our initial sort of leading edge of that, uh, that atmospheric river push. So let me push this ahead in time. Here we go. There's dinner uh, about 6 o'clock today, this evening. Here we are about 6 a.m. on Thursday. There's lunchtime on Thursday, and notice you've got some moisture there in Colorado, and that, of course, will be snow over the highest peaks, probably above 9,500 to 10,000 feet in Colorado with this, this moisture moving through. All right, so there is the dinner hour. A little bit of moisture in Colorado and parts of Utah. 
Um, here we go. There's the morning hours on Friday. There's the lunch hour on Friday. Um, there's a dinner hour. Here, here's the early morning hours. So this is probably 6 a.m. on Saturday, October 25th. There's our low making a right-hand turn out of Colorado and diving down into parts of Texas and away at that point. Now, this is the leading edge of our big jet intrusion with the uh, a little bit of atmospheric river moisture. So you're seeing quite a bit. I mean, when you see these greens and yellows, that's definitely some higher intensity, higher or heavier amounts of precip there embedded within that, uh, that flow. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the middle of the atmosphere. You can put all the pieces together here. So this is today. Um, there's our remnant low, um, and there's a big area of low pressure sliding over the Great Lakes. There's our next intrusion. So let's move ahead. This is the 26th. So this is on Sunday, uh, powerful jet rolling in area of what you're seeing here are pressure anomalies so when you see these blues these greens those are lower than normal pressures these reds these oranges those are higher than normal pressures so that's what we're looking at here on sunday the 26th and there goes our remnant tropical low down into texas all right now this takes us all the way out to halloween so this is friday the 31st interesting pattern here big area or drop in pressures off the southeast that actually may suck up what's left of hurricane melissa likely to come out of the caribbean at that point so you've got i mean look at these areas of low pressure kind of dancing around that looks like there's a fast moving cold front right here on october 31st that may clip uh, montana wyoming and colorado with wind on its way through and then it looks like a little bit of higher pressures right there moving in behind it so again, that's Halloween. All right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the jet stream pattern. So again, this is this is what likely would bring a little bit of that atmospheric river moisture. Look at the jet. See how it runs straight off the Pacific? So it's picking up moisture, and then it's escorting it into the West Coast. And then pieces of that will then break off and then roll across the Inner Mountain with snow for Utah, the Tetons. Uh, Colorado, Idaho. That's how that typically ha happens with these patterns. So we're still watching. It just isn't, this isn't nearly as impressive as when we were talking four or five days ago, but there's still something there. This is still going to bring some decent moisture. Um, here is the precipitatable water. So you're looking at water throughout um, all the vertical layers of the atmosphere. The higher amounts of moisture, um, are in the greens, the yellows, and the little red dots, the red streaks. And so right, that's the start. There's a surge, there's another one, and then there's a late one right there into early November. So there's at least two or three little surges of moisture coming in with this type of flow. The jet just brings it in, escorts it all in. Um, here's the intensity. So this is integrated vapor transport, and this is centered on the Pacific Northwest, up here in Washington, Oregon, and still looking at a moderate to low-level strong surge, 24, 25, early 26, and then it really drops off. But that's where the bulk of the moisture, that's when it will come in, 24, 25, 26, and we should really ring out some heavy precip and mountain snow. In fact, look at Seattle. We talked about this yesterday. This model still sees almost five inches of rainfall in Seattle. The Olympia area will see heavy rain out of this. You can see the, uh, the surge up here. It's pretty consistent with this type of flow. There's a lot of moisture that's going to fall. Um, that's all rain in Seattle. And you think about Rainier, and there's no question we're going to probably see two, three feet of snow up there along with high winds. Jackson, Wyoming. We've been tracking Jackson for several days now, looking at, uh, this is about an ensemble mean of about 10, 11 inches by November 6th. Quite a bit of it falls right here, uh, 26, 27, 28 uh, of October, and then there's a little bit of bump there into early November. Some of the air bars are up around 15, 18 inches as far as the extremes go, but Jackson, that's down in town. That's not just up on the ski area, that's all the way down to the valley floor. Um, okay, here's the five-day snow forecast. Snow in Colorado, snow in Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, big-time snow up into B.C. and including interior B.C. And then look at this heavy band of snow all the way up and down through the Cascades and the high volcanoes. So anywhere you see the purple pink, that's over six inches. That's a lot of locations. 
Um, and so again, most of this probably falls that you're seeing up here in the northern tier in the Pacific Northwest that falls with the atmospheric river on or after 1024. Some of what you see in Colorado comes from the remnant tropical moisture. Let me zoom into some of these maps. So here's the Pacific Northwest. I mean, you're easily looking at 6 to 12 inches plus in those bright pinks. And you can, I mean, we're up in the 30, 30 plus category up there in interior or um, in the coastal range of BC. And what happens typically is some of this makes it over the mountains in the volcanoes and then rides into Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and also Colorado. Um, here is uh, Wyoming, in fact, speaking of Wyoming. So over the Wind Rivers, that might be up to six inches, looking at maybe six, seven, eight inches, maybe a little bit more over the high Tetons and six to 10 up here in Yellowstone, uh, parts of the Big Horns, Big Sky, Absaroki Beartooth. Now down into Utah, that's probably up to six over uh, the High Uintas and probably up to six over the Wasatch. In Colorado, you're probably looking at six to 10, maybe even six to 12 inches. I'll do a zoom in on that so you can really see it. Here's Colorado. Now these numbers have continued to trend up because again, we're talking about a combination here from um, the remnant tropical moisture on one hand and also whatever we get from that from that atmospheric river surge that rolls in to Colorado. So there are a number of places here on the 10 to 1 scale that are looking at 6 to 12 inches. So we could see more up around 13, 14,000 feet. The ratios could be higher. Um, there's some really nice pockets of snow here indicated across Colorado. Let me show you how this falls over time. So there's your start. You can see it coming in waves. There's the third wave, fourth wave, and then a big fifth wave there, November 5th. So there's your first wave, remnant tropical. Here comes a little, little pieces from the river, and then a bigger storm system right there coming around November 4, 5, 6. So there it is again. Pretty cool to see that uh, accumulate over time. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, mountain weather update. Always appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.